want to give him the mic. Look how he wants. Look how he wants. <laughs> oh, Lord, God, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to take this man out of my mouth. Boy, somebody say they love Jesus tonight. <laughs> I'm tired. Very tired. However, my source will replenish my strength. Now, this word tonight is the beginning of something supernatural that the Lord has been given to me. Um, it is a very, very, uh, I'm going to try to make it as simple as possible. I definitely do not believe in trying to be all above your head. That's not how Jesus taught. But we got some ground to cover. I don't know how much ground I'm going to cover, but I'm telling you some good stuff. When I go in that word and I'm looking for stuff, the Lord, the Holy Spirit is saying, yes, this, yes, this, yes, this. Uh, no, not this. Yes. I'm going to kind of bring it to you. So it's very plain. I kind of use the NLT, the message, King James. I kind of used what I wanted to convey to you what God is saying. And if I had to title this, I would put the last day's church. Who knows where they talk about the last day's church? Teresa, what book? Thank you. Boy, this Revelation book, uh, this is a rough book here. But it says, God blesses, this is Revelations 1-3. God blesses one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church. I'm blessed already. I'm blessed already. He said, and he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says. Not only he wants you to listen to it, he wants you to obey it. Mm -hmm. For the time is near. Do y'all believe that we're living in the last days? Lord God, I pray that I decrease, that you might increase, Father. I pray that everything you have prepared for your people, that, Lord God, Holy Spirit, use this vessel. I'm going to forewarn you. Do not pay attention to the sweat. Some of you sitting back, you think I'm going to spit on you? Possibly. I don't know why Pastor wants you to be on the front tonight, but praise the Lord. That's blessed, holy water. <laughs> I told you I was blessed, huh? Yeah. All right. Let's go to Revelations. If you want to follow, take notes, you definitely can. We're going to start off in Revelations chapter 2. I'm not going to cover every church, only the churches that the Lord highlighted for this session. Maybe I'll get to the other churches later. I'll cover about four of them. I don't know if I'm going to get to them, but we'll see. Revelations chapter 2, verses 8 through 11 is the New Living Translation. He says, I write this letter to the angel of the church in Smyrna. This is the message from the one who is the first and the last. Jesus is talking. He says, who was dead but now alive. I know about your sufferings and your poverty. He says, but you are rich. I know the blaspheme of those opposing you. They say they are Jews but they are not. So many things come to my mind when I hear this right here in this section right here. Those Hebrew Israelites, uh, those occultic Jews, those mystic Jews, they say they are Jews, but they are not, and they persecute the church. He says they say they are Jews, but they are not because their synagogues belong to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. Now, this is where it really gets real. Sometimes your church think you're not going to be here in the tribulation. Let's see what the Bible says. He talking to the church. Yes. 8 through 11. I'm in the New Living Translation. He says you will suffer. He said 
The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. Is he not talking to the church of Smyrna? Some of you think you're just going to be raptured up out of here. You're going to take up, you're going, Jesus is going to take you on that highway to heaven. Oh, he will, but listen to what this verse say. You will suffer, say suffer, for 10 days. You didn't have to say that part, but that's good. That's all right. But if you remain faithful when facing death, I will give you a crown of life. So what is that telling you? Some of us will not be able to stand the suffering. We haven't even begun to see the persecution of the church yet. What they're throwing you in jail. And some of you can't even endure the suffering now. Let me take off my shoes. I'm getting just a little too. I need to get a little more comfortable. Look what he's saying. If you are faithful when facing death, they're going to kill you nine out of ten. He said, I'm going to be standing right there with your crown. With your crown of life. I'm going to be right there waiting for you. I heard one minister say that soon as the blade touches your neck, you're instantly out of your body and into heaven. You don't even feel it when they kill you. How many want to take the chance to see? I'll take it. Because if that's what he called you to do, to be a martyr, you're going to be a martyr. And if you didn't raise your hand, well, you might not be getting a crown of life. You might be going to the lake of fire. I need you to understand that this is talking about, and I'm trying to move from here, suffering will take place in the church. It's Smyrna, not the church we're talking about. Am I I'm missing something? Did, I, did you not read it in the scripture as I read it? So persecution will come for the church. I ain't even talking about the sinners and the ungodly. Because they're going to take the mark. They ain't going to jail for Jesus. Jesus. Some of them are going to say things they ought not to say. They're going to regret it. He said, I will give them the crown of life. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Now, he starts off with Smyrna, but he ends up with churches, E-S, plural. Because every church he wrote to was for every church. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed in the second death. Anybody know what the second death is? The lake of fire. You will not be harmed with the lake of fire. That's where the enemy and his angels and all who miss the mark here on earth ends up. Hell will be cast into the lake of fire. Now who want tickets to hell? Going once. Going twice. Yeah, one penny. First class. No, you don't want it? Okay. I ain't going to stay too much in Smyrna. Know that persecution is coming for the churches. We're going to journey to Pergamos. Now, if you go to that same chapter, we're going to go to verse 12 through 17. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Pergamos. This is the message from the one with a sharp, two-edged sword. That's the sword of judgment. Say, judgment is coming for me. Judgment is coming, coming, y'all. He says, I know that you live in a city where Satan has his throne. He said, look, church, I know you live where Satan has thrones put itself as king. But you have remained loyal to me. You refused to deny me even when Antipas, my faithful witness, was martyred among you there in Satan's city. But, what pastor said about the but? Cancel out everything he just said. I have a few complaints against you. 
you tolerate some among you whose teaching is like that of Balaam, who showed Balak how to trip up the people of Israel. He taught them to sin by eating food offered to idols and by committing sexual sin. In a similar way, you have some necolations among you that's agnostics. They are people of the light. Some people even call them the Illuminati. They are very much into knowledge. They like to mix the truth with lies. He says, such are among you who follow that same teaching. Repent of your sin. Repent of your sins. Let me get more into that in a minute. I will come to you suddenly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He back with his mouth. See, when God judges you, he don't need a physical sword that we use a gun, a knife. He just speak, bow, you going to bow. Now, I could have said, pow, <laughs> you'd have just been blown up. But I did say, bow. <laughs> mm, let's see what he's saying. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. He's saying that you are co-mangling with the devil. Now, is he talking to the church? I didn't hear you. Is he speaking these words to the church? Now, last time I checked my Bible, I started off with the last day's churches. He's talking about the devil in the house of God. If you give me a minute, I'll kind of break it down for you a little more. To everyone who is victorious, I will give some manna that has been hidden away in heaven. Instead of eating at the enemy's table, if you just wait, I got some bread in heaven for you. That will not defile you. I will give to each one a white stone, and on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. For the nosy people, when you get your stone pleasant, they can look at it. They ain't going to know what it means. They might ask you what it means. Don't tell them. If God wanted them to know what it meant, he would have made it available for everybody to know. He says when he give you the stone, Latoya, he's going to tell you who you really are. I'm doing good. Now, I want to make y'all understand a little bit. What's happening here with Balaam and Balak and what he's really talking about to the church. If you go to Numbers 24, 44, 41, chapter 22, verse 41, it says, then it came about. Now, Balaam was a man that knew God. They called him a diviner. He, in chapter uh, 22, verse 41, he said, then it came about in the morning that Balak took Balaam. Now, Balak wanted Balaam to curse the children of Israel. He wanted them to curse us. That's like a witch calling to come and curse the church of God. Look what he said. Balaam brought him up to the high places of who? Of Baal. Now, I want you to check out Balaam. Now, he served God. This is what God talking about, commingling. He brought him to the high places of Baal. From there, he saw a portion of the Israelites. While he was up on the high place looking down, he saw the Israelites. Now, God already told him. See, God had a problem with Balaam. God has a problem with some of, some of us because he tell us not to do certain things, and we still do them. That's why he was mad with him. He told him when he first sent them in, tell them, get out your house. You ain't doing nothing with them. Balak then turned around and sent some more men well-dressed, highly distinguished. Look it out. This time he paid more attention. It made him feel what? Important. Some of you feel important when the devil sent his top agents to you. You don't even know they're devils. You don't even know they're devils. But look what he said. When he looked down on the, the portion of the Israelites, then Balaam said to Balak, now when you at Baal's, High place. Why would you tell a man to make an offer? That's like me going into a satanic church. The Lord told me don't go. 
I go, me, Diane, my roadie, we, we there. They up there cooking up some poo-poo, some pee-pee, baby body parts. That's what they eat today. See, it's not the same. I'm going to get to it. They're cooking it up, and then they say, eat. And Diane said, let's go. Bye. Ain't that chicken sandwich you was eating the other day. This poo-poo. This pee-pee. I ain't lying to you. He said, offer up on seven altars. He said, build seven altars. Seven. Now, he guessed because he's using the Lord's perfect number. But if he only knew Satan's Bible is 777. Build seven altars for me here and prepare for me seven bulls and seven rams here. Balak, Balak did just as Balaam had said. Why would a man of God go into the enemy's territory and build an altar? And then what he did after, let me go check with God and see if he's going to accept it. That's what you do. You co-mingle with the world. Then you go by God. Let me check it out with the Lord. They got this XXX movie. XX. The, the picture show only show X. Well, I'm not going to do triple X. I'm not going to do double X. I'm just going to do X-rated. It's okay, I'm Lord. It's not pornographic. It's soft porn. Very quiet. It's all right. I expected it. Now, I got, I'm finished with this Balak and Balaam. But I want you to understand the kind of spirit he's talking about that's in the church. You're co-mangling with the enemy. You're offering all, um, altars to devils. In your house. On your TV. I'll get even closer. On your phone. Social media, baby. Your music. The enemy has infiltrated you, baby. You're playing the game. Like my brother Elias normally says, but he's not here tonight. He says, you smoke cigarettes, the devil promises to kill you. The Lord is telling you, you keep playing with that devil, you're going to hell. Ah, thank you, Pastor. If you want to go to Numbers 25, 1 through 5, I'm going to take it a leave a little deeper. Now, after Balaam was up there with Balak, and the Israelites were paying attention because you're watching from a distance. Now, look how dumb they are. That's us. I didn't say you. I say us. Check it out. Verse 1 says, when Israel was camped at Shittim, that's called Acadia Grove, the men began to have sex with the Moabite women. It started when the women invited them, the men, to their sex and religion worship. Ow! Now, I know you're not going to see it up here because I'm in a message. Let's, let's look at it again. I'm going to read it for you again. He says, while Israel was camped, there was in shop, there was at their house. They, the men began to have sex with the Moabite women. It started when the women invited men to their sex and religion worship. You see, I'm, I'm trying to get to your big boy. Because Baal and Ashtoreth, they are running this show. And they are God's little G that's come to rob you. You know how the enemy says, I come to steal, kill, and destroy? I'm going to show you his tactics. Then I'm going to give you God's resolution. But he's talking to the church. But look, I'm going to finish reading it for you. They ate together and, when, and then worshiped their gods. Look, look. Not only did they... They have sex with the women. The food that they burnt on the altar, the altar. Now today we're talking about poo poo and pee, but back then it was altar. The enemy always had in mind, and look, he's cannibalistic. He loved that you're a male and female, but he hates you. He eats human flesh. The occultic people, Satan worshipers, ritual today, in today's time, they eat human flesh. They ate poo, they drank pee, but their favorite is blood. Why? Life. Why do you think we got the movies, The Vampires, Twilight? 
I liked it, that movie. Should be honest. The only way that you're going to get uh, repent, you got to admit your fault. I watched every series. Engaging in devil worship. You said that very loud. But we were in devil worship. But he make it look good. That's what attract you. We suckers for love. A sucker for love, boy. You that romantic. Oh, I want him to be with. I forgot the man name. I ain't seen it in a long time. I want, oh, I know Bella. <laughs> yes, and Edward. Edward, that's his name. Yes, she want to be. Let her be the devil. Let her be the devil. She want to die. Look you. Get her, get her. He's seducing us. He's seducing us. I want to make it plain to you. He's seducing you. Now, though we laugh, Ariante, that fire is real. Because in having fun, you have to expose yourself, but you have to take accountability. Hmm. Look what God said. When it was finished eating and worshiping their God, Israel ended up joining in worship of Baal. They started worshiping and doing all this stuff with Baal of Porah. God was furious. His anger blazing out against Israel. God said, now I want you to pay attention. Take all the leaders of Israel. Did you catch it? The leaders were engaging in all these sexual appetites and killed them. By hanging, leaving them publicly exposed in order to turn God's anger away from Israel. Moses issued orders to judges of Israel. Each of you must execute the men under your jurisdiction who joined in worship of Baal Porah. Pastor Zach said, okay. Sister Chris, you go kill him. Sister Diane, you go kill him. Sister Carolyn, you go kill him. Brother Vern, you go kill him. Dominique, you go kill him. Sister Sharon, go kill him. You was just partying with these people in the house of God. Now you got to turn around and kill them. That's the kind of world we're in. Are you going to be able to kill somebody that you come and sit in church with every day? Today we don't use those kind of weapons. Our weapons are not carnal, but you will have to stand in judgment, the Bible says, against them. They say the very saints will judge the world. Israel is mixing with Baal, playing the whore. The church plays the whore. Partaking of orgies. Eating food offered up to Baal. The king, I want you to remember, the king of Moab worships Baal. Why am I right? Let's go to the third church I'm talking about tonight. Same chapter, verses 18 through 29. Uh, Revelations chapter 2. 18 through 29. With this, write this to Thyteria, to the angel of the church, God's sons. Eyes pouring fire blaze. Standing on feet of furnace fire, bronze said this. He's talking about God. Now, when you see God, and they're talking about him in that fire, when he dressed up in fire, you don't want none of him. So far, they said he was the first and the last. Then they said he was, his mouth brought judgment. It's the two ages. So, but now it's talking about God's consuming fire. I see everything you're doing for me. Impressive. The love and the faith and the service and the persistence. Yes, very impressive. Thyteria. I see that you're loving and uh, you got some faith in uh, You do good service in the community. You get better at it every day. But why do you let that Jezebel, who calls herself 
a prophet mislead my dear servants into cross-denying, self-indulging religion. I gave her a chance to change her ways, but she has no intentions of giving up a career in, in the God business. I'm about to lay her low, along with her partners as they play their sex and religion games. The bastard offspring of their idol whoring. I'll kill. Then every church will know that appearances don't impress me. You come in smelling good. You're dressed to kill. Devil on the inside. See, that's why God don't look at the outward appearance. He looks at the inward appearance. And he says, I have x-ray. Every motive and make you sure you get what's coming to you. God said, I'm going to beam in on you. I'm going straight internal. And I promise you, you're going to get what you deserve. I promise you, you're going to get what you deserve. He said, the rest of you dietarians who have not nothing to do with this outrage, who scorn this playing around with the devil that gets paraded as profundity, be assured I will not make life any harder for you than it already is. Hold on to the truth you have. Oh, my God. Until I get there. Here's the reward I have for every conqueror. Everyone who keeps at it, refusing to give up, you'll rule the nations. Your shepherd king rules as firm as an iron staff. Some of you God love. You know, he's a God of love and, and mercy and grace. Oh, let's, let's do it again. Oh, he's a God that loves and is full of grace. He's going to let me in. Not by the hair on your chinny chin chin. You ain't going in if your heart is wicked and you're not purging it, if you're not cleaning it up, if you're not changing, if you're not better than you was last year, God have mercy on you. You're going to need it. He says, this was a gift my father gave me and I pass it along to you. And with it, the morning star, are, you, are your ears awake? Listen, listen to the wind words, the spirits blowing through the churches. Let's look at who Babylon truly is. It's the church of Satan. Now this woman here, Jezebel, about to, because, this, you know, he was just talking about Jezebel, that false prophet. So I must explain Jezebel to you, because some of you thinking it's a woman. Eek, wrong. I'm going to show you who he is. I'm going to uncover him to you, because Satan is a spirit. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against principalities, not against powers, but rulers in the darkness in high places. Where are they? In darkness. Jezebel's name means Baal's whore. Jezebel's name represents Baal's whore. Never heard of him that wise, huh? If you go to 1 King chapter 16, verses 31 through 33, help me, Father. Ahab, son of Omari, became king of Israel in the 38th year. I think I went a little far. That's okay. Asa, king of Judah. Ahab, son of Omari, was king over Israel for 22 years. He ruled from Samaria. Where did he rule from? If you ever wondered why they didn't want Jesus to pass through Samaria, because Samaria had a lot of wickedness going on. But God still had to go. Ahab, son of Amaria, did even more open evil before God than anyone, yet a new champion in evil. It wasn't enough for him to copy the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebet. No, he went all out. First by marrying Jezebel, daughter of Ethabel, king of the Sidians, and then by serving and worshiping the god of Baal. He built a temple in ba for Baal in Samaria, and then he furnished it with an altar for Baal. Now, is this not a man of God we're talking about? 
He was a king of the Israelites. He married Jezebel. Who was Jezebel? Baal's whore. Who was Ethabel, her father? His name literally means, I'm with Baal. <laughs> now, I ain't told you who Baal is, but I'm coming. He says, his name literally means, now think about his father who named him that. I'm with Baal is what his name means. With Baal. So who are these Syrian people? Now, if you go to 1 King, verse 11, verses 1 through 5, I'm going to tell you who the Syrians were. King Solomon was obsessed with women. King Solomon, in his last days, fell from grace. Grace wasn't even given then, but he fell. Pharaoh's daughter was the only, the first of the many foreign women he loved. Pharaoh's daughter. Now, all the women in Israel, don't we say that to the men in the church? They go find the whore. Convert her, possibly. There's not enough good, godly women in the church they go out there and find a Moabitess, an Ammonite, an Edomite, Sidian, and a Hittite. He was with all of them. He had a woman problem. Real quiet. Real quiet. You must not marry them. They'll seduce you into infatuation with their gods. Solomon fell in love with them anyway refusing to give them up. Ah, don't be too hard on Solomon. What is your sin that you're not willing to give up? Don't tell us. Not like you would anyway. What is the sin that so easily besets you? See, when we're looking at other people, we can laugh and joke, but laugh and joke at yourself. They told him, don't marry him. He said, and, he, and they did seduce him away from God. As Solomon grew older, his wife beguiled him with their alien gods, and he became unfaithful. He didn't stay true to his God as Father David, his father David had done. Solomon took up with Ashtoreth. She's the biggest whore there is. She's equal with Baal. Because you see, Satan, see, that's who the Sidians worship. It says they worship Baal, but you see, you got to go a little, dig a little deeper. Ashtoreth is also equal with Baal. She's the woman counterpart. The whore goddess of the Sidians is what my Bible says. And Molech, and the horrible god of the Ammonites. Now, Molech, it's that mama. Molech is also right under Baal, but equal to Baal. He kills children. He burned them on the fire. Molech. Would you think that Israelites, the people of God, would be burning their children on the fire? Let's get in in the second half of our night. Let's see how this applies to us today. Satan and Bel, Ashtura, they even call her Ashura, they're equal. Satan worship is paganism. Can you say paganism with me? When you get home, Go and look up pagan holidays and worship. Not tonight. Which is devilment, occultic, demonic. Baal is a pagan god 
meaning Lord or owner. He is said to be God of fertility, God of the weather, God of the rain, God of the wind, God of lightning, God of seasonings, God of war, patrons of sailors, that sounds like the mermaids, and seagoing merchants, also sounding like the mermaids, leader of Rephium, ancestral spirits, sound like over there in Africa. Eshtira. Ishtar, another name for Ishtar. Estari, Ashira, all were gods of fertility, love, and war. Let's check them out. Let's see who's ruling the world. You got Baal. He's owner and lord. I think our God said he's lord of lords, owner of owners. I'm going to say that again. If he's a, a God that practices ownership, and we serve a God that calls himself Lord of Lord, means he's the owner of owners. So whatever he owns, God can take back. He's redeemed you by the blood of the lamb. You're not happy enough. You would be better off in hell, is what you're telling me. That's why you're silent. You don't know what you've been purchased back from. Because you were bought by the enemy. He was your owner. And some of you, he still owns. He says, oh, so he's the owner in the Lord. Now he got his counterpart, Ashtira. She's the whore, and she really is the bride of Satan. She is the one that produces all your love, romantic novels and movies and music. That romantic music will get you in trouble if you're single. Stay away from it. You go to those soft porns and you watch that twilight and you watch that midnight and you excite. Wrong! You don't need to be getting excited unless you're married. Even if you're married, you should not be going to get excited by the devil. Let me tell you what she's made of. She's made of sugar and spice and everything nice. And she uses many devices. She's treacherous. And when I say she, I'm only referring to her because we are known as the bride of Christ. He also has a whore called Ashtura. And she's a bad girl. If you go further in, you'll see the mysteries of Babylon. He's talking about this whore here. The devil is robbing you. He has come to steal, kill, and destroy you, your families, and the next generations. The Lord told me in prayer the other day, he said, the devil equally loves to use male or female. He's not like us in the church. Oh, women can't preach here. Yeah. You know, you know, natural stuff, you know, people like women can't preach. Uh, uh, um, what else they do? Uh, oh, children don't have no understanding. Uh, you got to give them them dumbed down cartoons. I'm going to get to them cartoons in a minute. But however, he said, you know, the devil don't have respect of person. He'll use a baby. I know you don't want to hear this, but it's true. Because what was in the parents is now transferred to the child. That's why we dedicate them back to the Lord. And when they're old enough, they should make a, deci a decision to serve God. Ah, That's why he's Baphomet. He is a mixture. The Baphomet is three breasts, a penis, and a goat's head. That's the symbol of Satan. He's sexual in every way. Now, the, the head goat any beast I'm ready to tackle. I'll have sex with any animal. As to her love, she said bestiality is okay. In Canada, they allow, uh, they allow you to, to marry your pet. Baphomet is a mixture. He loves a mixture of his key players in the last day work. And one of the key players are the LGBTQ. They just popped up in the last five, ten years. Bam! 
Christians, 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 I hate them, I hate them. Christians, Christians, we the only one calling them out. And some of you in your house like this. I don't want to talk about it. No. Uh-uh. I'm not going to say nothing. God loves the gays. God loves the lesbians. I'm not going to say anything. This is the Lord checking you. Sister Crystal, what do you have to say about the LGBTQ? Love the people, hate the sin. Got it? Love the people, hate the sin. I'm going to say it again. Love the people, hate the sin. Now, you don't have to go beat people up with your theology. Let the word of God be walked through you. Not if they open a door. Don't worry about this church. Walk in. Some of you, you need to pray before you be responding to these people on this Facebook. Some of you, best response I've ever heard. I'd be like, man, I should have said that. But sometimes, you must ask the Holy Spirit if it's your fight. Every fight ain't your fight. You're going to give an account. We got them in our families, uh, brothers, uh, sisters, uh, sons, daughters, uh, fathers. How can a father? Yeah, he was undercover. <laughs> Playing a down low. I remember, I y'all remember when AIDS was going off and it was like straight people was catching AIDS and they didn't know how. The Lord said, yeah, some of those men were saying straight but on the bisexual side. They were sleeping with the men and their wives and brought that disease home. You be on the lookout because the LGBTQ are going to be the people that persecute the church. They're going to rob us of our religious freedoms. In California, they are forbidding the selling of Bibles. They don't want you to sell Bibles in California because that's the biggest community out there in California. Good. Wrong. Occultic. Jesus taught repentance. Let me tell you what Jesus did when he walked the earth. A lot of people want to change deliverance. Some people don't even believe in it. You think I'm crazy? Ask Diane. Ask Elias. Some people don't think they got devils. But the last time I was reading in this book, it said to the churches. I'm saying to the side. Last time I was reading in the book, he was speaking to the churches. Some of us got devils. Some of them are big devils. Some of them are small devils. All together, they get kicked out the same way. In Jesus' name. Jezebel hides between Baal and Ashtura. The scripture that the Satanists live off, this is what their Bible says. Do as you wilt. You can think about it, do it. Jump off a building. You don't know if you jump off that building, you're going to die? Jay-Z had a clothing line that says, do as thy wilt. How many Jay-Z fans I got in here? Okay, nobody raised their hand. That's good to hear. Don't worry about it, mama. He's a devil worshiper. He married to Beyonce, though. Uh Uh-huh. The devil has false prophets, false teachers, etc. He continues his legacy through television, Hollywood movies, music, sports, and social media. Now, if I did not love my pastor, I love him. But I love Jesus more, and I don't think my pastor has an unbalance in sports because he served Jesus and has Jesus here. But there is demonic oppression going on in the sports realm. How many of the, I want the guys to answer this, have seen an unveiling of men saying they're gay? Pastor, am I right about it? 
Men would never admit that. But on the, on the field, rah, who would a man? Let's talk about what happens here in, in his music. Let me just tell you about the music. They say you must sing about that. This is what they tell you when you go, if you want to be famous. I know that Joy wanted to be famous in the music industry uh, at one point. We'll use him. Let's talk about him a little bit. Look what they say. You must sing about sex, drugs, alcohol, and violence. Who's the god of uh, sex, love, and war? Ashtura, baby. Ashtura. They say if you want to be famous, now they got people that testify of this when they didn't go all the way. They say you got to sing about sex, drug, alcohol, and violence. Hip-hop, violence. Kill them. Kill them again. Kill them. Kill them again. That's when they started out. Just kill them, 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 kill them. Then they got to beat. This all you were in here in the beat. You just kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. Just kill them, kill them. And you're jamming. You don't even know what you're saying. They're going to kill your sons. They're going to kill your daughter. Look you. Do you? Kill them, kill them, kill them. This is what they're doing. Oh, I haven't even got there yet. Look what he's saying. They uses witches. Witches are not with those black hats. Witches are dressed up, baby. Witches most of the time, I, and I'm telling you, and I got red hair on the night. But I'm telling you, witches wear pink hair, blue hair. I remember uh, they like, and I'm talking about the good witches. Such a thing, eek, wrong, no good witch. A witch is a witch is a witch is a witch. But they like to look colorful because they think they're a good witch. There's no good witch. If you practice witchcraft, God does not accept you. But these witches, I was watching this guy named, this Todd guy. He's an awesome guy. He had so many legacies. He was a witch. He came out. God saved him. And he, oh my God, the stuff he revealed, man. When they come out, the stuff they reveal, you be like, we that dumb. He said, Satan. Now he said, witches don't believe in Lucifer. They believe in the devil. I'm gonna come over here. Witches don't believe in Lucifer. Because that means heavenly things, you know. The devil. Yeah, good and evil. That, that's what they, they practice, good and evil. Now, these witches, now I'm going to back it up. Ah, I'm going to do like Jim Crow. Over here before that song came out, kill them, kill them, kill them. Before that song come out, look the witches. When they listen to this song, they're speaking in devil tongues. They're going to kill people. They're going to kill children. They're going to kill mothers. They're going to kill brothers. They're going to kill them. They're going to kill them. They're saying that this, there's a master that goes out. So they're saying, kill them, kill them, kill them. Kill everybody. Kill everybody. Go in the malls. Kill them. Go do a drive-by. Kill them, kill them, kill them. Song, come out. Look how dumb you are. Kill them, kill them, kill them. Kill them, kill them, kill them. You leave out there, you kill somebody, you don't know why. You ever hear these people say that? And you really think they're lying? Oh, they're lying. They know why they're killing people. Thank you. Now, who again is the God of love, war, and violence? Ashtarah. Some even call it Asherah. Some even call it Ishtar. Some even call it Astarte. I can go on, but she's the same whore. And oh, for the record, <laughs> most people call her Easter. You keep getting your bunnies. Now, I got to put this disclaimer in here. I'm not telling you. I must put this for the record. Pastor, do you hear me? I'm not telling you not to practice and worship with Asherah. Astara. Astara. That has to be your own free choice. God doesn't make you. I'm not going to make you. I'm just giving you messages from the Father. She's a whore and she's deceiving you. I'm telling you she's a liar. 
Why do you think she uses bunnies? Fertility. Ishtar. Easter. My sister called me one day, one Easter. Crystal, are you buying some uh, Easter bunnies? I said, God, goodbye. Hang up. Get, get off my phone. Did I tell her not to go? No. I'm taking a stand. If she asked me, well, why not? I would explain to her. But my point exactly is this. You don't have to explain unless they ask for a reason. Now, sometimes I just explain because I need to explain. They're dumb. They need light. Ignorance. This is what the Bible calls it. They're walking in ignorance, which is darkness. I think I was saying that to be funny, but it's true. Ignorance is darkness. After they put that master copy together, I go back over here. That was the violence. She said, you know, you remember they told you sex, drugs, and um, violence. So then they song, sing a song. I want to sex you up. I so this is what the, the witches do. I want girls to lose their virginity. I want uh, uh, men and women to cheat on their wives. I want sex. They see all these. We're going to make the video. They, they pray incantations over that. But we're just doing a record right now. Yeah, we're going to get them. We're going to get them. Get them. Then the boys come out. And they be singing, oh, sex you up. Yeah. Who sang like that that y'all know? Who sang like that that y'all know? Marvin Gaye, a lot of men singing high tenors. I'm, I'm trying not to call y'all music out, because it's my music, too. The Isley Brothers. Ain't they talking about sex in this music? Y'all act like y'all know what I'm talking about. Younger people, let me, let me help y'all. That Nicki Minaj. She, she, she gay, she straight, uh, she everything, she buff man. Oh, she everything. Oh, she's gonna, oh, she said she's gonna take a break from singing. What singing? What singing was she doing? She's gonna raise a family. Listen, your mute, now look. Your music, I'm telling you even now, I'm not lying to you. Even now, if I'm listening to that oldest but goldest, and I listen to that music, brother Tony, it's not right. <laughs> You're right. Take you right to hell. <laughs> You're right. Take you right to hell. He's right. Because it depends on what right you're talking about. Now, let me tell you, when I start talking about your music, you're going to get mad. They want to fight you for that music, Pastor. Now, there are inspirational songs that, you know, it's talking about love, and innocent love, you know. You know I, 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 that's inspirational songs that even worldly people make. Because this is what they tell them. They tell them, we want sex, drugs, alcohol, and violence. They say, but no, I want to make some music about my culture. I want to make some music about real love. I want, and, and they tell them, yeah, you could do that, but you also got to do this. So you be the judge of your music. I'm not going to be the judge of your music. Now let me just expose myself to you. There are some playlists in my phone that need to be deleted. Yes, <laughs> you better not go there. <laughs> keep looking, keep looking. They're going to hell. No, nothing wrong with that song. Look at what you, l listen to the words of what they sang. Now, I used to love this song. They used to call me white in the military, brother boy. Sister Teresa. <laughs> Hotel California. They're going to hell. They're not getting out. I didn't know what they was, that, I, didn't, I didn't even know that was what they were singing about. Looking at the Hotel California. 
Such a lovely place. How is lovely and you're burning? Such a lovely place. He said, you can go, but you can never leave. It never hit me. <laughs> Think about it. You go. You can't dance all night. Hell. They're talking about they in hell. Now, they took that heroin to get there. <laughs> Movies. Same message, new faces, sex, drugs, alcohol, and violence. Same thing happens. I recently went to see Rambo. Why did I go? Why, Father? I'm in there hollering Jesus. Oh, my God. My friend telling me, shut up, sit down. You're going to put us out. Shut up. I'm never coming to the movies with you again. Friend, you can't go to the movies no more. You don't know how to take movies, friend. They, they, they're killing left and right. I'm, the violence in this movie. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, they was killing. Uh, they actually took a man heart out. It's just why he was still alive and watching the show at the time. I'm like, oh, Lord, ow. I'm like, oh, Jesus. And my friend said, shut up, shut up, girl. Be quiet, Stacy. Oh, friend, shut up now. Ooh, I was going like this. Mm, on the fight. Ooh, that's all. The, ooh, killing them people. Y'all, don't go see it. Now, if y'all go see that, they might put y'all out the movies. Don't go. Sexual images that are imprinted on your soul. Porn. Ah. Now, that porn, you, this how you, is how people watch porn. Now, honestly, I've never watched porn. But I'm going to show you how people watch porn. The wife come in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? What, baby? Nothing. The wife like nothing. What's what? Oh, yeah, I'm just in here watching a game. Wife leave out. This time he go lock the door. Choom, choom. He watching that. Now, these images are imprinted on your soul. Your heart, your will, your mind, your emotions. It takes the Holy Ghost to come and erase it. So this is, they're so engrafted in it. They're watching it like this. Ain't something about it. You know it's wrong. You're, you're looking over your shoulder. You're looking for somebody to what? Come catch you. Then you got child porn. You would think who would watch child porn? A pedophile. Now, I must speak on them because Ashtura wants to give them legal right to marry children 13 and up. I told you she was a whore. She wants to give them legal right to give you, your child can marry at 13. I, God put this in my, I couldn't even put this. 11-year-old boy drove from Florida to North Carolina with a GPS on an iPad. He dropped signal. He was going to meet a man he met on uh, Snapchat. 11 years old. I can't make it up. The police, he, he, he dropped signal. He got lost. He stopped, went to the police. I'm lost. How old are you? He didn't want to talk up. 11 years old. What are they teaching in school? Turking. Y'all see that queer show? They're starting them in, in kindergarten. You, you, I just don't have enough time. They are twerking in your children's kindergarten classes. They are telling them it's okay to be gay, lesbian, queer, bisexual, transgender. And in the state of Louisiana, in Lafayette, queers and lesbians and gays are in the school talking about it's okay. Baal and Ashtura are pagan gods. I'm going to tell you again. Baal and Ashtura are pagan gods. I'm being repetitive for a reason. Soft porn. Now, this is how we rate reasoning. Now, I didn't know what triple X was when I was growing up. Y'all know what triple X is? 
Y'all know what tri triple X movies? Oh, y'all want to be innocent? Oh, okay. All right. Now, triple X movies are pornographic movies. Then they got double X. Now, do y'all not think something wrong when you got X-rated movies that we go and see? How many of us go see X-rated movies? I'm the only one go see X-rated movies at the movies. <laughs> X-rated is not necessarily sexual. It could be violent, alcohol, drug, everything as Tura stands for. And if it's too strong, they put an X on it. I should have I should have given my first mind. I should have pulled out some of these X-rated movies. Rambo is an X-rated movie. What did you say, Ariante? Django, X-rated. Rated R, that's what an X. I should have said rated X, huh? Rated R equals X. Rated R equals X. So it's, now there's different reasons they might rate you R or X. They just drop the X and put the R because they don't want to make it sound too bad. Because when you hear triple X, you think about porn and child porn. That's right. Let us not forget our cartoons. Oh, that's not, that's not that, that's not that. <laughs> no, Tony. One night with the king, that's G. <laughs> G is what you should be watching. General audience. Now, I want to tell you, hold on, because I know my, my girls in here watch Jane the Virgin. They told me. Uh, well, we're going to talk about that later. Cartoons. Let me give you a little history on Walt Disney. <laughs> How many of you love Disney in the house? Or you let your kids watch it? Be honest. Raise your hand. Hey, hey. You might not have it now. Be quiet, G. How many of you have watched Disney movies? Let me tell you about uh, your boy. He's a pedophile. Walt Disney is a pedophile. He's a child pedophile. When they make the cartoons, I hope I'm informing you, they use women and male genitals. That's how they start off creating a character. I'm going to say it again. They use men and women private parts to start off building a character. You can YouTube it. You will be amazed what they do with a penis, what they do with a vagina, and they turn them into people. But they start off because the backdrop is sex, drugs, alcohol, violence. Why wouldn't they start it off that way? If you're a pedophile, you're consumed with those thoughts of the genitalia. We run our kids to these amusement parks where they, at certain seasons, look what your boy do. At night, he leased it out to a select elite that might be named Illuminati, that might be named a Gnostic, that might be named blah, blah, blah. They station children around the amusement park. They hunt them down and molest them and sodomize them. Children are tied up, waiting to be found, to be sodomized or raped. Who's this whore, Ashtara? You don't know what you are, you're, you're entertaining, you don't know.
Social media is his newest deception. I'm going to hit this one hard. <laughs> Do you find yourself You might even do that drug pose. You sit, then you go through your pictures trying to find, I'm talking about myself, trying to find the best one. No, 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 no. Yes! Then you go to your filter. I don't need no makeup. Just slenderize me a little bit. My, my, my face a little bit, you understand? Then you catch yourself, oh, this is it. I'm the star. You're narcissistic. You have to pull yourself back. You in, you in love with yourself. You don't need a boyfriend. <laughs> you know. You're looking for that like. You're looking for that like. Oh, this picture only got 10 likes. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Father, caraso toremo. Oh, Father, you're so in love with yourself. And I dare somebody say, oh, golly. In the comments, I need some water. you get that comment you look fat in that picture <laughs> fighting words <laughs> you're in love with yourself you get false knowledge on the social medias I didn't hear pastor talk about you need to you know, you need to cut back on some of these people you listen to. You're just too involved in all these false prophets. Why don't you just look in the word of God? It's not enough. That's what they say. You can hide behind social media. You put a false picture up. They did it to poor Pastor Johnson. There was hacking people page. Poor Pastor Johnson, they sent some woman that like the man trying to come on to her. You can hide on social media. What if somebody got your picture, smiling at her, talking about you an all night stripper? <laughs> Brother Thomas not gonna like that. <laughs> you don't even know who they are. They can hide in social media. They can torment you. They can put false witnesses out there on you. They plant doubt in the minds of believers and unbelief. I'm going to say it again. Believers, because disciples, that's why we are in discipleship. Discipleships are strategic. They are constantly looking for the next deception so that they're not deceived. But believers that play church. Carnal Christians. Nah. Nah. I have to get into the next one. Before I go to the next topic, all these tools can be used for God. TV, movies, music, social media, men and women of God. But I must talk about what that Jezebel really is doing. Fallen prophets, men and women of God, they're practicing. This is what God is saying in the church of Thyteria. In secret, they're having homosexual activity. They're having lesbianism activity. They're, they're in private. The, the Lord said they're practicing sexual worship in private. Yeah, her faith, her service, and oh, that's good. He said, but 
in private, she's seducing my good servants to become whores. Just think a minute. I'm pretty sure you can think about somebody who's fallen from grace. They were in secret and magically got exposed. Men and women of God with secret sin. That's who Jezebel is really after. The men and women of God. Fornication, adultery, masturbation, all forms of sexual immorality. They also engage in occultic practices and rituals. The food they now eat and offer up to Satan to defile themselves are poo, poo, pee, pee. And they eat human flesh after they rape and sodomize kids. They eat the body parts. Say it again, my brother. Why do they do it? For power. I'm going to say it again. They rape and sodomize children. Then they eat their bloody body parts raw. They don't even cook them. It's called pagan worship. Now, if you think the Lord doesn't have an example of this, you're sadly mistaken. If you go to Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 1 through 17, I'm going to just read it to you. It's been here before. In the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day, I was sitting at home meeting with the leaders of Judah. And it happened that the land of my master, God, gripped me. Ezekiel. When I looked, I was astonished. What I saw looked like a man from the waist down, like fire, and from the waist up, like a highly burnished bronze. I told you, when he come as a consuming fire, he ain't playing. Ezekiel chapter 8, verses 1 through 17. He reached out what looked like a hand and grabbed me by my hair. The Lord did. Grabbed Ezekiel by his hair. The spirit swept me high in the air and carried me in, the, in visions of God to Jerusalem. He was in Judah. To the entrance of the north gate of the temple and side court where the intimate image of the sex goddess. Now, who did I just tell you that whore was? And it makes God so angry. He had been set up. Right before me was the glory of God of Israel, exactly like the vision. I had seen out on the plain. He said to me, son of man, look north. I looked north and I saw it. Just north of the entrance loomed the altar of the sex goddess Asherah. That makes God so angry. Then he said, son of man, do you see what they're doing? Outrageous obscenities and doing them right here in my house. It's not enough to drive me right out of my own temple. But you're going to see worse yet. He brought me to the door of the temple court. I looked and saw a gaping hole in the wall. He said, son of man, dig through the wall. I dug through the wall and came upon a door. He said, now walk through. And I, and the door, and, they took a, and I took a look at the obscenities they were engaging in. I entered and looked, and I couldn't believe my eyes. Painted all over the walls were pictures reptiles and animals and monsters, the whole pantheon of Egypt's gods and goddesses being worshipped by Israel in God's temple. In the middle of the room were 70 of the leaders of Israel with Jasna, son of Shaphan, standing in the middle. Each held his censers with the incense of rising in a fragrant crowd. He said, son of man, do you see what the elders are doing here in the dark? Each one before his favorite God picture. They tell themselves, God doesn't see us. God has forsaken the country. Then he said, you're going to see worse yet. Mm -hmm. 
He took me to the entrance of the north gate of the temple of God. I saw those stupid women sitting there weeping for Tammuz, the Babylonian fertility god. Who did I tell you that no good whore? Now, Tammuz represents Valentine's Day. I'm not telling you to not buy your wife no candies and flowers. And I'm telling you it's a pagan holiday. Ashtura is in charge of it. The little boy Cupid is actually shooting penises into the hearts of people. Tammuz. The boy in there with a little cute a little angel. I ain't got, get out of here. Pulling back penises. Ping, ping, shooting them in your heart. Ping. Have you gotten an eye full, son of man? You're going to see worse. Finally, he took me to the inside court of the temple of God. The inside court now. There between the porch and the altar were about 25 men. Their backs were to God. Them pornographic men. Remember I told y'all? They were facing east, bowing in worship to the sun god. He said, have you seen enough, son of man? Isn't it bad enough that Judah engages in outrageous obscenities? They filled the country with violence. Who is this God of violence? Who is? What's her name? Do y'all know her name? <laughs> and now provoke me even further with their obscene, obscene gestures. That is, they have, an, they have angered God on their hands. From now on, no mercy. They can shout all they want, but I'm not listening. And then verse 9 says, in verse 1 says, Then I heard, I heard him call out loudly, Executioners, come. Bring your deadly weapons. You think God not going to judge sin? You are sadly mistaken. I'm talking about in the church. Why do you think he said, if the church be scarcely saved, where does that leave the ungodly and the sinners? Check your walk. Some of you don't want to hear the truth. Sorry for you shouldn't have came tonight. But you should be glad you're hearing it. You have a chance to repent, turn away from these evil practices. I'm no better than you. I expose myself to let you know I'm human, but I repent daily and I move forward. If you fall, repent again and move on. You shouldn't be practicing these things outrightly. He's robbing you. This is how he's killing you. He's stealing from you. He's destroying your life. You got open doors. Don't play church. Just go to hell. Why come to church and play? Going to go to hell, do it big. Go down to that song, kill them, kill them, kill them. Go down to the floor, kill them. You're dying. Jesus is coming back. This is, I'll close on this. This is the kingdom of God, church. He's coming back for a church that have made herself ready. Jesus is the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks amongst the seven golden lampstands. Jesus is the first and the last who was dead but is now alive, the one with the sharp two-edged sword. Jesus is the message from the Son of God whose eyes are like flame of fire, whose feet are polished like bronze, the one who has the sevenfold spirits of God and the seven stars, the message, the one who is holy and true, the one who has the keys of David. What he opens, no one can close, and what he closes, no one can open. The one one who is the amen. Jesus is the amen. All oh, these can be found at the beginning of every church. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. Now, if we want to shine, thank you, Father. There was a church called Philadelphia. He wrote this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true. 
The one who has the key of David, what he opens, no one can close, and what he closes, no one can open. I know all the things you do. I have opened the door for you that no one can close. You have a little strength, word of hope, yet you obey my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love because you have obeyed my commands to persevere. I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. All who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God, and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God. They will be citizens in the city of my God. The new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. This is Jesus. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. I leave you with this. Revelations 3, 19 through 22. I correct and discipline everyone I love. I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference, your sin, your evil ways. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we'll share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Church of Philadelphia is right here at Word of Hope. Do you believe you're that church? Do you believe you're that church? Now you might be dragging some of those other churches in your members, but he said if you invite him in, He'll come and sit with you, and he'll tell you how to get rid of those things. There's hope in Jesus. He don't want you to go to the lake of fire. But I must inform you that hell is real. And I'm talking to the church. He's talking to the church. Do you still feel blessed by the word? May the Lord bless the hearer and the doer of his mighty word. I bind the enemy that might try to steal the word out of the hearts of the people that you've sown, Father. I lose the Holy Spirit to make them go deeper. Go and study the word for yourself. I didn't have time to go through everything, but I basically went through most of everything. I couldn't even tell you about Josiah and Solomon. Two kings, two different spirits. One had the whore spirit, one had the spirit of God. Go search them out, Solomon and Josiah. Now I'm telling you, you need to, I want you to close your eyes. And if you saw yourself tonight, come to the altar and repent. Put some music on for us, Joe. They like music. If you saw yourself tonight, come on to the altar. If you saw yourself at, in any part of the message, 